Okay guys, about to go into Estes Hatchery and get the new chick babies, so I'm super excited. I'll show you what they look like when we're in there. Okay, you got the little guys in the car. <gasps> Hi babies. Hello. We've got what should be three black copper morans, three um, Easter egg or Americanas, one of the two. Their website wasn't too specific on what it was. And there should be two little leghorns in here as well. I'm guessing that's you and you, probably. Yeah. That would be my best bet. Well, you guys do look kind of different. It's okay. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Y'all better behave on the car ride home. Alrighty, I just finished setting up a little brooder box temporarily for the babies. And these guys, who need their water changed out, are going to be going to an outdoor brooder that we're working on making right now. So, should only be a day or two before the little newborns can go from that box to this one. So, that'll be good. Let's get y'all moved and put in there. Hey, babies. Hello. Okay, I may have to tape up the sides of the box here if you guys try and jump out, but hopefully you won't do that. We shall find out. Okay, and similar to how I have that heating pad set up for all of these guys instead of doing a heat lamp, especially since we keep them inside and one of those heat lamps can be a pretty big fire hazard, I have another heating pad right here. And what I do with it is take a cling wrap, or press and seal, rather, and basically coat this whole thing in the press and seal. So that way, whenever the chicks poop on it, or if something gets spilled on it, nothing actually gets onto the fabric itself. And so whenever you're done brooding the chicks, then you can just peel it off, throw this in the wash, and good as new all over again. There we go, all done. Nothing fancy. If you do this, you may find that the uh, Glad Wrap Press and Seal doesn't stick very well to the fabric, but that's totally fine. Just put multiple layers of it on because it sticks to itself really well. So it'll be kind of like a pillowcase around it, if that makes sense. So now just time to uh, plug this guy in. And after you do so, be sure to pay attention to how much time the babies spend inside or underneath the heating pad versus out and about in their brooder because that'll be able uh, that'll be a good indicator on whether you need to turn the temperature up or down for them. I also have one that has an auto off function right here which is important because you don't want it to turn off after two hours of warming the babies up. So pressing this will make it stay on and uh, you won't have to worry about them getting cold in the middle of the night or anything. A little bit of an update for the lavender Orpingtons. These guys, after getting them from the breeder, had bloody stool and looked to be a little bit on the lethargic side, but put some uh, sulmate, I believe it's called, into their water and they have been doing great ever since. This is day four of their treatment and 
so far I think everybody's gonna make it everybody's looking pretty good <laughs> one of the puppies here hey buddy what are you doing don't try and climb in there again you'll get stuck like last time oh man oh man so many puppies hey guys quit eating my feet quit that hey hey <laughs> All right, off to feed the big birds now. Hey, Mr. Tom, you're looking beautiful today. Hey, guys, you hungry? under there that we actually put babies in occasionally to kind of introduce them to the flock and it was a good idea to fence it off because somebody was under there laying eggs under the nest boxes I wonder who yeah There you go, guys. <laughs> 